Hello and welcome to this first look video at the latest version of Ubuntu Studio, which is Ubuntu Studio 22.10 Kinetic Kudu. First things first, this video is going to be slightly less in-depth into what programs are installed compared to the last video. So if you really specifically want to have a look at what comes in a standard Ubuntu Studio, you might want to look at my previous video, which is on 22.04 LTS. That's a long-term support release. If you're newer to how Ubuntu works, you'll probably want to look at one of those first. But instead, this one is one of the six monthly releases, which I personally prefer to use. They're pretty much exactly the same, apart from some of the programs are a little bit more up to date. So we're mostly going to have a look at what differences there are. Now, first things first, I'm really, really happy with this little change. We can actually see that the Kudu itself has appeared finally in the desktop wallpaper. For a long, old time, Ubuntu Studio had made their own wallpapers to go alongside the uh, ones that were made for, you know, the normal GNOME or Unity canonical release of Ubuntu, the mainline Ubuntu release, which would always have the animal associated with the code name put in there somehow. My favourite being the Disco Dingo, which I'll pop up here, which I actually still have on rotation as one of my wallpapers. And then for a while, Ubuntu Studio went to using this one, which I'll flash up on the screen now, which is very similar to the one we have right in front of us, but missing the animal. And I always felt like it's... It's a little bit gimmicky, I know, but I like including the animals. I'm like, I'm, I'm quite glad to see that return to the folds here. Let's have a look at the release notes, shall we? So here on Ubuntu Studio's website, where you can find 22.04 LTS, or, which is Jammy Jellyfish, or the one we're going to be looking at now, which is 22.10. So as I previously mentioned, this is one of the sixth monthly releases. The next version of this to come out will be 23.04. Then there'll be 23.10, and then the next LTS, long-term support release, will be 24.04. .04. You basically go for the six monthly releases if you really, really want to have certain programs kept up to date. Personally, I do, so I'll be updating. If you are updating, I believe this happened last time, when you go from an LTS to the next, uh, like, standard release, you normally get upgrades a little bit later, so I'm going to be on my main computer... I'm going to be sticking to the 22.04 for a little bit until I get the prompts to upgrade it. Some people like to just get a USB stick and just force upgrade it. Let's have a quick look at some of the changes compared to the last one. Studio controls, which I'll be bringing up a little bit later in the video, has been updated. This is one of those main big killer features for Ubuntu Studio. I know I said I'd go into more detail if you looked at my previous video, but in case you are wondering what the difference is between Ubuntu Studio and the normal Ubuntu, or rather Kubuntu, as that's what it's based on. Basically, is it comes with a load of programs and packages for creatives installed and pre-configured out of the box. Um, so you could just, if you wanted to, have normal Ubuntu and then, you know, install, if you're doing music production, for example, a DAW. But this gives you things like um, Studio Controls, which is a program developed by Ubuntu Studio to give you much, much more finite control over your audio. But as well as that, it has different things like the low latency Linux kernel, which helps with uh, audio latency as well as other things. Just easy stuff put in, because what we're going to do is just install this, and you've got everything. So Studio Controls is going to be updated, Ray Sessions is updated, Carla, which is a suite of audio plugins, updated. Jack Mixer is updated as well. Uh, it's going to be quite interesting, because uh, I know that Pipewire is getting ever so closer to being ready. I don't believe it is the default audio server yet in Ubuntu Studio. Not yet, anyway. It wouldn't surprise me if they change the pipe wire, you know, in the next couple of releases or so. Uh, the LSP plugins have also been updated, and uh, Audacity has been upgraded as well. They're no longer using the Snap version. Although, I wouldn't have really minded. I don't tend to mind whether a program is a .deb or a .snap. I know a lot of people have had issues with them, but I... I I think that package is quite good. I tend to use them on quite a few programs. Under Graphics, Krita has been updated, as has Darktable and Digicam. Uh, Krita is a digital painting program, and Darktable is good for photo editing. And under video, OBS has been updated. That It's screen capture and streaming software. I'm actually using OBS right now to record this video. Blender, which is a sort of 3D animator, but also a video editor, has been updated. Cajun Live which is the video editor I personally use. It's often compared to things like Sony Vegas and Adobe Premiere, but I like to use this one. And then we have Freeshow, which is new, and OpenLP, which is new, as well as a QLight Controller Plus. 
Now, one of these programs, we have to look into it, it was originally made to be used in churches. So we should have, it'd be quite interesting to have a look at that program. Then as well as the release notes, they have the release news part um, on here. And uh, something they're bringing up here is the Ubuntu Studio Feature Uninstaller. And I've got to be honest, I'm really, really glad to see this. Uh, Ubuntu Studio is, is quite well known for its installer, which is a program you can use on any Ubuntu-based system to essentially turn that into Ubuntu Studio, regardless of desktop environment. So, for example, Ubuntu Studio as standard comes with the KDE Plasma desktop environment, but I personally prefer XFCE. So I install Zubuntu, which is Ubuntu with XFCE, and I upgrade it. And that's quite easy because actually you can install just the graphics suite of applications, or you can install just the video editing or just the music, for example. But oftentimes when I do that, I find myself going in and uninstalling certain bits here and there. For example, I will use Cajun Live, like I said, as my video editor, so I don't personally have a use for things like Blender or OpenShot, so I'll uninstall those. But this is the uninstaller, which is really quite handy because normally I have to go in and manually uninstall things bit by bit by bit. Then do, you know, things like apt auto-remove and start getting rid of all the dependencies that's left in. Uh, but this seems to be... <laughs> Something really, really handy, you can just pick and choose what you like and get rid of all the stuff you don't. Because it's great, it's very much a Swiss Army knife in the way that you install it and it gives you everything you might need for a creative. But you might be an author and have absolutely no need for, say, like a game engine creation suite or, or painting if all you're going to be doing is writing novels, for example. They're speaking about Audacity here as well, how it's going to be moving away from being a snap at least for the for the more recent versions. This is something quite good about Ubuntu Studio, is they will often spearhead towards all of Ubuntu to them to update certain packages. Like a good few videos ago, when I first did videos on Ubuntu Studio, the .deb version you could get of OBS was something ridiculous like 0.01. Uh, it was way behind, and I remember bringing that up, and they said they were going to look into it, and they, they did, and they, they actually got the .deb package for the whole of Ubuntu to be updated. And so it looks like they're sort of pulling their weight here as, as well and getting this updated, which is good because I know Audacity had been on a 2 release for quite a long time on Ubuntu. It was, it was fairly outdated. In fact, I was having some problems recording even with it, but not with things like Ardor, for example, because of just how badly up to the out day it was. And this is something that I think is really quite cool. And actually, they haven't said it on here, but I can imagine going hand in hand with something else later, which I'll mention, uh, is software for live performances and for houses of worship, things like you know churches, synagogues, things like that, or whatever, whatever, whatever religion takes your fancy. A lot of, just use churches for an example, just because in my country, churches are the most prominent one. They might need to have lyrics for hymns or readings up on things like a screen, or they might want to control lights or microphones and everything. If next time, next time you're in a place of worship, no matter what denomination it is or religion, have a look around and oftentimes if, if they've modernized, you'll see all of their audio equipment just dotted around the place. And oftentimes they're actually they actually are trying to blend in. I remember I was looking at buying an amp from PV, the American amp company, about 10 years ago. And I remember they had a whole bit on their site for churches. And it was mostly the same PA system they were normally doing but way longer cables and in like creams and whites so that they would just blend into the walls. And I think for musicians, especially a secular musician, you often don't consider it. But of course, places like churches and other places of worship do need this kind of well, hardware and software. So it's really, really quite handy doing that. But of course, this is for live performances as well. This is really quite handy because this could be useful if you are doing, you know, stage lighting or stage management for something like a theatre or a concert venue or, you know, even, even a pub that puts on gigs or even quizzes and stuff like that. This can be, this can be really quite handy. Something else is in a recent video that Unfa did on our door, the new version, our door 7, which unfortunately I have to bring up, isn't in this version, although I imagine they might be adding that in for a backport PPA very soon. They've tried to add in more bits for doing uh, live electronic music. And live electronic music isn't anything I know particularly much about, as I tend to, you know, I'm a guitarist, so we tend to do, you know, normal instruments rather than computer music. So take this software for things like live performances, and that update to our door, and you could have not only not only a computer you could take around to do live electronic music, 
but also you probably sync it up to get it working with you know, the PA, the lighting in the venue, and make it sound really, really impressive. Meaning that Ubuntu Studio might be able to spread its wings and head out of the studio and maybe become Ubuntu Live. <laughs> just a thought, just a thought. And with always, if you want to have the stability of the standard LTS version, but you might want to have some other stuff uh, from the newer version installed, you can just use the Backports PPA. This allows you to get stuff from the newer version back into the old version, or, like it's saying here, you can get stuff as it's developed for 23.04. I'll probably be activating this, especially if in 23.04 we get the latest version of Ardor, which is, like I said, is Ardor 7. And just before we actually have a look at all the packages, something I do need to say is people are asking about snaps here. I feel like I'm the only person who seems to actually think they're any good. I'm just going to have a quick two minutes here, skip ahead if you don't want to hear, of me defending snap packages. They're the universal package format that the Canonical are trying to introduce. They're somewhat of an opposition to Flatpak. I have been using both for the last couple of years now, and I honestly feel like they are pretty much the same. Snaps did have a problem with taking ages to boot, but really, once you do the first boot, they tend to be fine. And if anything, in the last year or two, I've actually had more problems with flat packs than I have with snaps. So personally, I actually slightly lean more towards snaps. Anyway, now that I've enraged every Linux user in, in the video, and this has now a million dislikes, let's go on to what you get installed in the Ubuntu Studio. So normally I go through absolutely every category, but if you want a big idea of what ones are in the main distribution, check out my 22.04 video. But we're going to go through some of the heavy hitters in the Ubuntu Studio specific categories, which are the audio production, graphic design, and video production categories. So some of the heaviest hitters in audio production you will find are Ardor, which is a great uh, digital audio workstation, DAW. Now, like I said, this one, at least as of time of filming, is Ardor 6, not Ardor 7, which, is, which literally just released, I think, about a week ago. Yeah, you know, right at the end of, of, of this version of Ubuntu Studio. So I imagine it'll remain as 6 going forward. However, that is just the version that's packaged with the distribution. You can, of course, always compile it yourself or buy a more recent binary of it from our door. Audacity, as I mentioned, a new version updated there for that. Carla, the suite of plugins. LMS, which is another digital audio workstation although it's much more heavily focused on just electronic music and less so on manipulating actual audio. MuseScore, which is notation software, I use it all the time for my job. I find it super, super useful, and it opens guitar profiles, just in case you didn't know that. You, if you go on to look at your guitar and download something from Guitar Pro, you can actually run it on there. So there's a quick little tip for you. And of course, the aforementioned studio controls also getting an update. Under graphic design, we have Blender, which like I said before, it's a 3D modeler slash animation slash video editing program. It's a bit of a jack of all trades. I do hear people really, really going on about how good the video editing is if you can get through it. It's got a bit of a learning curve. It's not a program I've used, but I know it's quite useful for a lot of people. Darktable, which is a free and open source equivalent to, is it Lightroom, I think? So it's really good for editing pictures, especially if you are a photographer. GIMP, or the GNU Image Manipulation Program. I use this to make all the graphics. In fact, the things I'm flashing up on the screen right now, I have put together using that program, and all of the thumbnails you can see on my channel are also made using it. Think of it as a free and open source alternative to something like Photoshop. Inkscape, which would be a free and open source equivalent to things like Illustrator. This is a vector graphics editor. Basically, vector graphics are graphics which can scale up and down perfectly. So it's good for things like logos. You know, normally if you take like a PNG or a JPEG and you stretch it out, it starts to look blurry and rubbish. Vector graphic will actually stretch to be the exact size you need it to be. K Color Chooser, super helpful for, well, not just graphic design, but also uh, video production needs. Basically, just turn it on, point your cursor at something, and whatever pixel you're on, it'll give you the color code for it so you can get exactly the right color you're looking for. And Critter which, like I said, is a digital painting program. And then under video production, we have, once again, Blender, like I said before, DVDNG, uh, really useful for burning DVDs and CDs, if you still have a use for that. Cajun Live, as I said before, is a really good video editor. It's exactly what I've edited this video on. OBS Studio, which I said before was streaming and recording software. OpenLP, these are the uh, lyric projection, this is lyric projection software, although it's uh, originally aimed at church music, as it says in that uh, menu there. And, of course, the aforementioned Q Light Controller Plus. 
Other than that, the only other category really is the Ubuntu Studio Information category, and this just gives you a load of links mostly to websites and mailing lists, just in case you need to get any support on using Ubuntu Studio. And there we go, a hopefully quick video on the latest version of Ubuntu Studio. Uh, once my computer gives me the prompts to update, I will be updating to this exact version. But if you want the latest versions of things, the six monthly releases are really quite stable. I've never really had much of a problem with them. I know some people like to use just the LTS versions on what they would call a production machine, a machine that has to be mission critical, for example, if you had a studio you're using it in. But for me personally, I use this computer for everything, and I will be updating to the latest version. So, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you found this video useful, and hopefully I didn't speak so quickly that you couldn't understand me, because I know I have a terrible trait of speaking too quickly in these videos. I have a feeling I might have done just there. And uh, yes, there'll be lots of videos coming up in the future, uh, both tech and purely music related. And I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.